no matter how your dad did or didn't do, guess who wants the job, dad, in your life now to father you? Like I said, I haven't been here before. I'm not talking about Ebenezer. I'm talking about at 55, I haven't been the parent of, of a 27, 25, and 22-year-old. And so it's all frontier. And I still need fathering as I father. Not only to recover from some of the things in my story, but to be prepared for what is in my story now. I don't want to be ill-prepared, ill-equipped, ill-informed. And that's why we come to orientation. That's number two. First, dads, we got to get our hearts back. And in that process, we actually can, number two, get oriented. And when I say oriented, I'm talking about for a man who's an oriented man, he's a man who knows three things, is actually experiencing them, not knowing them academically. That's an important thing, but knowing them experientially. An oriented man is a man who knows who he is, he knows where he is, and he knows the good that God is up to in his life. That's what, and doesn't that make sense that, that would make an oriented man. So what's a disoriented man? One who doesn't know who he is, doesn't know where he is, and really doesn't know or is unsure what the good that God's up to in his life. I've been a disoriented man. Honestly, truthfully, been a disoriented man. And therefore, if I'm a disoriented man, what kind of dad am I? I'm going to be a disoriented dad. So, Getting oriented, one of the stories of my disorientation that I hate to tell, but I must. So when my girls were smaller, when they were younger, uh, we had a weekend where my wife and I got to get away. My in-laws live in Greensboro, so we got to drive, drop the three girls off. I think they were seven, five, and maybe two at the time. Take them to Greensboro for a little couple days away, right? Because dads, sometimes mom needs a break. Uh, and so that was all set up. And so we got to uh, have our couple days, and we come back to Greensboro, we pick up the girls, we get home, and I get a phone call from my mother-in-law. You know, immediately I'm thinking, what did we forget? What did one of the girls leave? You know, we'll, we'll have to arrange for it. So she says, Michael, can I talk to you about something? I said, sure. She said, she goes on to tell a story at the kitchen table with the girls that one of them had literally spilt some milk. And when my mother-in-law went to help, she said, Grandma, don't tell Dad. He said, she said, Honey, it's okay. Why? Why not tell Dad? Because he'll be angry. Who had told her that? How did she know or feel that? A disoriented man was a disoriented dad. And through frustration and anger, right, over the things that happened, spilled milk, had delivered a message to her heart. It was the kindest and one of the worst phone calls I've ever had. And it was the beginning of an invitation of God. Just like that paper in Ben Kale's reading, it was an invitation to sober up, wake up, and enter in. You're needed. But leave the anger behind. That's not. See, in each one of us, there's this false self thing, this false self creature. Paul calls it the flesh and the false self. Men, it's not you. On your best days, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't. Be angry, frustrated, you know, talk through your teeth. What are you thinking? What, what are you doing? Stop. Be more careful. This false self thing has to be dealt with. And it has to be seen. How are you going to crucify the flesh if you don't see it? And see the ways that the enemy is at work trying to use you to hurt your kids while God has actually entrusted your kids to teach you how to love. That's what I mean by orientation. We're in a very large story. And the role of fathering and being a good dad, we need to see the landscape of how it works. I have wounded my kids. But getting oriented 
to the larger story, seeing that actually my fatherhood is opposed by the enemy. See, we live in a landscape where there's an unholy trinity as well. Satan and the fallen angels, this false self flesh, and then the world is a fallen place. Jesus himself says that Satan is the prince of this dark world. Kings, princes, territory, authority, that's how this works. And none of us as dads want to give the enemy an inch. That's why it's important to get your heart back and in the process become oriented to how this works so that we can enter into, number three, the battle. Before we step into the battle, though, let's just make sure we understand that we live in the orientation and the larger story we live in is a battle. It's the greatest love story of all. Set how and where? In the midst of the fiercest battle. And the battle's over your heart. That's why above all else, guard it. Don't let any untruths, don't let any lies. What does Jesus call Satan? The father of lies. What's the power of a lie? That you believe it. And the truth is supposed to set us free. But until we can experience the truth, dads, for ourselves, there's this rivalry, there's this contention going on. And that's why our children need wholehearted dads. Dads who know what it is to walk with God through orientations. Paul says in Ephesians 5, right? Be careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. I love how the Amplified says it. Therefore, see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, not as the unwise, but as the wise, sensible, intelligent, and discerning people, making the very most of your time, recognizing and taking advantage of each and every opportunity with wisdom and diligence, because the days are filled with evil. We ought not think that that this passage has expired. Are our days still evil? Then we need oriented men. I, I know that this is not usually a Father's Day passage. It should be. It should be a day to day reminder that we've got to be careful. We're not home yet. We live in this fallen place. And guess who lives in that space too, dads? Your kids. They need a dad who knows how to navigate through this fallen place and how the enemy is coming after them. How do we know the enemy's coming after them? Because we know, dads, he came after us and our wife and our parents. That's how this story works and being oriented to it is important. Right, Ephesians 5. Later in Ephesians, what does Paul talk about in Ephesians 6? The armor. Why do we need armor? The implication is we are in a war and we need to be equipped for it. 1 Peter 5, right? What does is, what is Peter call the enemy, the adversary? A roaring, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We need fathers who are oriented to the landscape and how this works and can partner with God to bring life and love. John goes on in 1 John 4, 4, we are overcomers. And he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. John isn't comforting us there. He's challenging us, inviting us to fight. If, if we're overcomers, what's that imply? There's something to be overcome. And if we don't know what that is or how it looks, then, then orientation and training is going to be really important for a man to step into his role well as a father. Your children do live in the same story you do, so they need an oriented dad, one who's getting his heart back, walking with God. 